will live to dance on Vladimir Putin's grave. Every Friday night, Manoto TV, a Persian language satellite channel based in London, invites viewers to turn back the clock. Tunele Zaman, or Time Tunnel, delivers a feast of archival footage, showcasing life in Iran under its last Shah, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi. What viewers see is a vision of a liberal and stylish Iran, led by a benevolent king. It's enough to make you wonder why the 1979 revolution and the overthrow of the Shah ever happened. You see women out and about on the beach, on university campuses, in the workplace, participating in, in sports, images of the Shah and his wife. Um, his third wife, usually the Empress uh, Afara, always looking very beautiful, looking very glamorous. The idea is, look at how, how beautiful and happy and fashionable everybody was in the past, um, unlike how we are now. I found it quite extraordinary when I visited Iran a few years ago to find out that almost every person in Iran was familiar with Manito. What guaranteed the channel's success was their access to Iranian archive footage from the period before the revolution. Manoto started its uh, uh, broadcast for audiences inside Iran to provide them with entertainment and news that they would otherwise not receive. Certainly all the channels inside Iran are censored, certain topics are taboo. Manoto provided those topics, such as monarchy, which has been the biggest taboo. When Manoto launched in 2010, it entered an already crowded market, Iranian media outlets broadcasting in exile. The first wave of Iranian emigration took place in the lead up to the 1979 revolution. Mass protests against the Shah, his oppressive government, and his brutal secret police, the Savak, would bring him down. The popular uprising eventually coalesced behind the country's new leader, Ayatollah Khomeini, and in 1979, the Islamic Republic was born. Many Iranian emigrants ended up in Los Angeles, which became a hub for Persian media production in the 80s. After that, wherever Iranians were migrating to, new media outlets were taking root. The Exile TV of the 80s was very raw, it was very immediate, so they were appealing to a nostalgia of literally yesterday, or you know, just last year, a few years ago. And they were also appealing to um, the sense of loss and um, unrootedness that, that folks were feeling as, as new exiles. Their programming was mostly music and films, and then some politics. When satellite technology emerged and there was a possibility to broadcast into Iran. You saw then a, a shift and more of an emphasis on political content and calls for action and calls for you know, even revolution. The channels that come out of Los Angeles, the diaspora channels are overtly political, clearly very anti-Islamic Republic in terms of their output. Many of them are monarchists, certainly very nationalist. And they're so political in actual fact, it's so obvious where their direction is that I think their impact is probably lessened by it. ایرانی که 39 سال گرفتار شده و خوشبختانه ملت به پا خواسته ایران تصمیم گرفتن که این مسیر رو عوض بکنن those channels that have a less clear political agenda and really have a more of an entertainment agenda i think they have great attraction in iran after la came dubai gem tv and farsi one set up shop there adding Turkish and Mexican soap operas, dubbed often poorly into Persian, to the mix. Then came Manoto, out of London. Manoto's stock in trade is entertainment, laced with nostalgia. Politics isn't absent from its programming. It's less ham-fisted, glossier. They had this program called Gugush Music Academy which was like a music talent show. And uh, it was named you know, for Gugush, the pre-revolutionary singer and, and diva. And she's, the, she's like the lead judge on the show. A lot of the songs that they um, sing as part of the competition are songs from the pre-revolutionary era. 
what's happening is a really interesting dynamic. It's a very subtle appeal to, to that time past, and it, it brings in um, a new audience for it, a younger audience that can now have their own memories with songs from the pre-revolutionary era. They produced a very influential um uh, documentary on the founder of the Pahlavi dynasty, Reza Shah. It's a largely sanitized reading of the rain, it has to be said. And Reza Khan, in this process, moved to the establishment of a party and the establishment of the security of the It's very rosy, it's very positive. They're obviously producing an agenda, but it's done in a quite subtle way. It's not so overt as to put people off immediately. He was a man of a man and a man of a man. زندگی خانوادگی برایش بیشتر اهمیت داشت. بعد های قضاییش را تقریبا همیشه در کنار بچه هایش میخورد. نسل جدیدی که امروز مثلا 20 سالشه. The younger generation have this impression that before the revolution there was no poverty in Iran. And certainly Manito would not discuss the Savak torture or the censorship of cinema, newspapers and the parliament. Just as the Iranian government selectively chooses footage to create a very negative image of that time, Manito cherry-picks glorious and beautiful archives that do not provide a true picture of historical reality to viewers. According to some who run diaspora media outlets, like Nazanin Ansari, the managing editor of the Kehan London website, pro-monarchy output is fulfilling a real audience demand. For us in Kehan London, Every single time that we put anything to do with monarchy, with Reza Shah, with, you know, Muhammad Reza Shah, with Reza Pahlavi, the clicks go up high. There is a demand. It's not as if we are providing them with a sanitized version. People want it because they look at back at history and they see uh, in those days they were proud, a proud nation. Manato's funding is a mystery. The channel won't speak about its large budget. The unanswered questions have spawned numerous theories that the BBC, the CIA, the Pahlavi family, the Saudi government, or even the Islamic Republic itself are all possible sources of the funding. We requested an interview with Manoto to discuss the channel's finances and programming. They wrote back saying they have a strict policy of not speaking with other media outlets. This is one thing that journalists zoom on. Where does Manoto get its funding? For us, uh, Kehan London, a lot of Iranians provide us with funds, but they don't want their names to be known. Manoto as well. And certainly, if you come and ask me who are my funders, I will not tell you. It's a very tough market. And why should Manoto uh, tell uh, people who, which Iranians are funding it? In December last year, there were demonstrations across Iran over the crippled economy, high unemployment, and rising food prices. Amidst the raised voices was a small contingent of protesters calling the names of the Pahlavis, that of the founder of the dynasty, Reza Shah, and even that of the US-based crown prince, Reza Pahlavi, his grandson. I believe that Manato had an active role in these protests when we heard the chants in favor of the Pahlavi family. Their programs have caused the new generation, who haven't experienced life in the Iran of the 70s, to now own the nostalgia that once belonged to their parents and to view that time as a lost paradise. This nostalgia has been uh, generated by the Islamic Republic itself rather than, than basically creating a new generation that detests the pre-revolutionary period. They've actually produced a new generation that are much more interested in what that period was about. Now, part of this, to be honest, is because even the worst aspects of the Shah, um, when it came to political repression, for instance, has been multiplied several times over by the Islamic Republic. What people are producing is popular history for the masses. It's not necessarily good history, I have to tell you, but it's popular history. You know, it's going out and people are lapping it up.